I didn't become sergeant of detectives by dropping a case because somebody <laughs> walked off with the evidence. I wouldn't either. What's so important about evidence? Damn it, this business about no one seeing any strangers on that floor, I just don't like it. You know what that means, don't you? A cop. He walks in, shows his badge, gets a security card, nobody pays any attention. And he picks the busiest night of the week. Yeah. All kinds of stuff being signed in. Everybody cutting corners so nobody gets hung up. Only your cop would try it. Because only your cop could get away with it. But he's not going to get away with it. You know how many cops Leonetti has in his back pocket? Forget Leonetti. He isn't going to lead us anywhere. But that kid of his, or that Matthews monkey might. Let's put a tail on those two. See what we come up with. No problem. I know who I want for this. I'll brief them and get them on it right away. Steve, be sure who you pick for this assignment. You know what it's like when a cop's gone bad. Yeah, I know. If the two I want aren't in today, I'll wait for them.
that man? The man just shot a runner down in the ravine. Well, if you really did see something, there's a police station at the next stop. I just catch your breath. I can't understand you. I said, listen, can I get you some water? No, no, thank you. Go on. Officer, I, I, I think I, I just saw someone, a killing, someone being shot. Just now, I was, I was, on, I was riding on the subway. We were going over the ravine. I looked out the window and I, I saw a jogger running along the path. Then, then the man pulled a gun from his pocket. You saw him. Did you see the gun? No, but I, I saw him do this. But before I could see the rest of it, we went back into the tunnel. Wait here a minute. Relax a moment. You should have a car prowling nearby. We'll get them to have a look. Meantime, let's get down everything and anything you can remember. Description of the man with the gun, the jogger. Okay, uh, well, the man with the gun, um, he had on a top coat. It wasn't a trench coat. It may have been suede. And it was open. I remembered it billowed as he walked. Um, I think I saw a tie. I'm sure I saw a tie. Uh, and just normal street shoes. Was he wearing a hat? No, uh, no, no, he wasn't wearing a hat. Got my message, good. Yeah, Doris tells me I had an audience. Yeah, a guy on the subway. On the subway? Yeah. Well, so far, no other duty-minded citizens have called it in. Hey, look, guys, maybe we can convince him to imagine the whole thing. Yeah, I doubt it. It was real enough for him to go to the cops. Well, what we've got to figure out now is how to keep a lid on it. Mm. Now, they sent a car in to take a look around. Nah, they won't find a thing. That's good. I've got the sergeant's report he took at the station. With any luck, I can hold off giving it over to the detectives for a while. Yeah, but the 
can you sit under that one? The sergeant and I are both off for four days now. We'll be back in on Monday. So what if somebody calls another station? It ain't happening in our division. They'll call us. Well, suspected homicide gets widespread dispatch. Don't worry, I'll hear. If it goes to Central Detective, I can find out easy enough. Look, nobody's going to miss that creep. I'll go in tomorrow and cut the log. If nobody has reported anything, I can... Oh. Have you decided what you're going to do? Yes, as I said, nobody's reported anything, and all we have to do is trash our subway friends. Oh, no. So who is this guy, anyway? Oh, yeah. Yeah, his, uh, his name is Peter Armstrong. He works for a company called International World Investments. Yeah, nice job, too. Vice president in charge of overseas business development. And naturally, he lives in the suburbs. <laughs> naturally. Let me have a look at that. Now, yeah, keep it. You don't need his address. It's a big shot like that, and he rides a subway. <laughs> so how did you suppose you'd keep this guy quiet? An accident. An accident. An accident. The children are afraid you've forgotten to roller skate on Saturday. <laughs> no, I haven't forgotten. They haven't given me the chance to forget. I know, but you should let them know you're thinking about them. You didn't mention it all evening. I know. I was a little distracted. Anyway, Saturday's still a long way off. I told them you had something else on your mind. What do you do now? Are the police going to get back to you? Well, they have my name and address. What? Oh, don't worry about it. It's kept confidential. They just might want to question me some more about the man's description, that's all. Anyways, the sergeant said a detective would contact me. A detective? Why? Procedure, I guess. I don't know. You know, it's funny. You think we would have heard something by now. They've probably got some investigating to do before they contact you. Let's have a snack and watch the news. Who knows? Maybe they found some evidence in the park and they don't even need you anymore. Mm, maybe. Call me after all. What do I know, Mr. Armstrong? Cops have their own way of doing things. Be great if it was all over, but still, I'd like to know what happened. Why don't you call them? I thought about it, but I don't know. What do you say? Uh, oh, I guess I better get going. We have time for a three miler today. Then I got a board meeting at 1:30. Let's see you later, Vince. Thanks a lot.
there, right? Okay, we're all set. Four now? Okay. Ready? Come on, big guy. Head up there. Go real slow. That's it. No comment. Not just now. Can you be here when I get back? When will you be back? Later tonight. Busy Saturday afternoon? What's with you coming in on your days off? Something up? Yeah. I just on my way to Barney. Thought I'd look in and see if anything interesting was happening. Huh. Hey, Donna. First bus this week? Doing good or lucky? Well, not getting much. Well, if you part. Cops. These creeps wouldn't know what to do with a real crook. Drunks and working girls is your speed. Oh, you're probably right there. I just wish you'd keep out of our way so we could get on with important business. Say, hey, what happened to that kid who tried to rip off the bicycle shop? Oh, uh, nothing yet. Probably won't get much. Petty crime, first offense. See? He'll get probation. You'll be fine. You're both back on the streets, and we have all this paperwork to do. Why don't you give us something to really nail you with? Screw yourself. I'm going downstairs to see if any of the boys want to go for a beer. All right, let's go. Do you want me to get 
Listen, talk to that lawyer. Find out what he knows and what he's doing. Got that? Good. Get back to me. Yeah, yeah, I know all about that privilege stuff. Just do what you're paid to and call me on the coast. Leave us, Joseph, and don't let anybody disturb us. Yes, sir. Well, you're keeping well, Oscar Matthews. Good. Protein. It's good for your health. Tell me, outside the court last week, you said you'd take care of things. This case isn't going any further than the preliminary hearing. It won't. No, sir, it won't. My lawyers tell me different. They say they caught you red-handed. They walked right in in the middle of the transaction. My lawyers say it's an open and shut case. Ironclad. You know something my people don't know? When we get to that hearing, the case will be thrown out because we've lifted the evidence. I don't want to go into any details, but uh, we managed to get into the property room at headquarters and we stole the coat. I gather our friend and protector, Officer Winger, was some assistant. Look, if I needed to know what is important, his lawyer and his mother told him not to leave the house until after the hearing. Oh, yeah, he's a Mr. prisoner Mr. in his own home. His lawyer's scared, so he's scared. Well, there's no... Madre mia! And I'm helpless to do anything because of his mother. But you don't have to do anything. The case will simply fold. Smart guy. Okay. We'll see. But let me tell you something. Before my boy goes into the dumper, a few heads will roll. Got me? Good. Now get out of here. Tell Angie I said take you home. Did I hear you say you were heading for the coast, L.A.? Both coasts. Martha's Vineyard next week, L.A. the week after. Look, anything happens I should know, get in touch with Dennis or Angie. Well, have a good trip and give my best to the boys in L.A. That thing humming. Hey, Fred, how's the law today? <laughs> Hiya, Lou. Let's see, Lou, dressed to the nines, eh? <laughs> Come on, let's go over there where we can talk. How do you like being a gum shoe? Not easy, eh? <laughs> Great job, isn't it? This guy's never alone. I've been feeling this guy for, what, three, four days now, and as close as I came to the guy was yesterday. So me hitting him, I nearly got wiped out by that truck. This guy's never alone, except when he's out jogging. Yeah, this is going to be like a bad dream. Remind me never to take up jogging. It's bad for the health. <laughs> now, where's he go jogging? Well, I've seen him out twice now. He likes to jog during his lunch hour. What is he, super jock? Well, on Thursday, he ran from his house down to Robbins Park and back, and I guess he did the same on Friday, but I'm not sure since I had that run-in with the truck. Did you run today? Nah, because the kids were overseas. Yeah. No, he's super dad. Well, if he runs into that park, it would be a perfect setup. Okay, Lou. Stay with him. If he goes running tomorrow, I'll try to put a hit on him. But make it seem like an accident. Oh, why bother? Look, we've got to shut the guy up. Why don't we just get it over with? Because if it's an accident, nobody will give it a second thought. Yeah, but, but if this uh, guy comes in with a bullet through his head, people are going to pay attention. Yeah, but trying to find and the perfect... someone, like the sergeant, might notice and remember that this guy reported the shooting, okay? 
Yeah, okay, but we're spending so much time on this. I mean, how long are we supposed to go on chasing hey, again? Look, you guys, tomorrow is Sunday. To hit him, I'll have to do it near his home, and I might have a hard time being in that neighborhood. But uh, I'll stay with it. You never know, something like that. Okay, Lou. Call me tomorrow night and let me know how you made out. Tell me about Leonetti. Well, all he knows is that we were successful in getting the evidence against me and his boy from the property room headquarters. He doesn't know anything about Manny being knocked out. That's good. Well, none of this could be helped, but well, in their eyes it would look, it would look messy. For them, it would look sloppy. You, well, you know what I'm trying to say. You're amateurish. To them, it means T-R-U-B-E-L. Uh, you're right to keep it quiet if you can. You know, if they have to come in to clean it up, some bozo's going to take the rap for the killing, somebody else wears the drug scam, and you and me and Lou, why, we get some more cement booty. Become fish trees in the lake. Never, never. Cute. Lighten up, Fred. We're okay so far. We and Eddie's out of town for two weeks, so we've got till then to work it all out. And besides, Lou's a good man. He won't let us down. I know, but it doesn't make any difference if Lee and Eddie is out of town or not. He's got eyes and ears everywhere. If any of this slips out, he'll know. Well, if Lou doesn't get this guy tomorrow, I'll join in. And maybe the two of us working together can make something happen. Good. Monday I'll be back on duty. I can monitor the calls without raising suspicion. I only hope the sergeant doesn't remember and ask about it. It's too soon to pretend I've completely forgotten. Yeah, right. Well, listen, uh, you take care of yourself, eh? Okay. Boulevard to the plaza and then down to the park. I'll probably run through the park and come home the back way. Be about 12 miles. I haven't had a good workout in over a week. I'm feeling kind of stiff. Don't overdo it. I'll try not to. You guys behave, okay? Don't give mom any half hole.
Maz, could you come in here for a couple of minutes, please? I'm missing a few things. Oh, great. Oh, you look at that. Okay, first things first. I'm missing photo layouts of the Hong Kong project. Second, I'd like to set up two meetings for this afternoon. One with Charlie to bring him up to date. And second with group management at um, 4. Was there something else? Yeah, see if you can find the number for the police station I was at last week. It was Division 12. You still haven't heard from them? No, not a thing. It's been a whole week now. I'll make a couple of calls and see if there's anything new. Okay. Thank you, Matt. 12 Division, please. 12 Division, BC Winger speaking. hasn't left his position outside of Leonetti's mansion since he took up the tale. The kid just doesn't leave the place. In spite of how you think his old man would act, I'm positive that kid's scared to piss. He's got his mother's blood in him, not the rest of the family. Like father, like son. You'll see. She don't fit in and neither does he. Five will get you ten. She hired that lawyer. He wasn't one of the regular guys who usually comes in for those punks. What about the other one? What's he been up to? This guy gets around. He spends a lot of time in the bar at the village restaurant. He's had a couple of meetings with some jokers there, and at the boxing club on Lansdowne. I could never get close enough to get a make on him. Then on Saturday afternoon, two of Lynn Eddie's goons picked him up and took him to the mansion. I bet that ruffled his feathers. Actually, no. He looked quite relaxed, even smug with himself. Drove right past me as he left. Quite frankly, I expected this creep to skip bail. He's looking at a lot of time. He knows we haven't got the evidence anymore. That's why Leonetti hasn't offered him up in exchange for his son. This creep's got insurance. Do we have any description or any leads yet on who lifted the coke? No, we're working on it. But uh, get a make on those other two and see if we can get anything on them. Hey, since the Leonetti kid isn't doing anything, why don't we spring Jones and get him to help Parker? Yeah, all right. Okay with you? These guys are active night and day. We could split their shifts. So what kind of luck left you answer the phone just from our guy call? We can't start depending on luck with this thing. Well, for sure, we'll be done for. Uh. Hey, uh, let's, uh, let's go over here and talk. Hey, uh, Lou. How'd you, uh, how'd you make out following these past couple of days? Well, you don't want to know about yesterday, and today he didn't leave the office at all. His wife gave him a ride all the way to work, and he got a ride home to somebody else. It's unbelievable the way the guy always has somebody with him. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to wait until he, until he runs into that park. Now, how can you rig an accident in there? How can you keep from being seen? Well, it's a good location. It's very isolated. There's a deep gorge near the back, and even if he doesn't run near it, I can pop him, carry him to the edge, and toss him over. Yeah, that park should be pretty empty during the week. Oh, a few pensioners are feeding the stupid squirrels, so you're right, it's too crowded. Listen, Fred, I'll join Lou from now on. We'll grab this guy first chance we get. I mean, hell, let's think positive. Uh, this thing could be all over by tomorrow, right, Lou? Uh, who knows who this guy? I guess he's going to run tomorrow, but I wouldn't bet my life on it. Yeah, I don't know how long my stall this morning will keep him satisfied. We've got to get him before he wants more information. Now, I pulled a seven-day swing shift, so I'm out of it for a while. I'm sorry, guys. But you're going to have to handle this without me.
What's your name? Jennifer. But my friends call me Jenny. Are you here to see the birds? No, no. I'm just uh, getting some fresh air and thinking. It's nice and quiet here. You can get a lot of thinking done. And usually don't get disturbed. What do you think about? Oh, uh, well, lots of things. There's lots of things to think about when you get older. It's nice to go someplace where it's quiet. Be by yourself and work things out. Like when I go to the playground sometimes? Jennifer, you come along. Stay with the group. He's not one of my friends. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Jennifer. Or Jenny. You can call me Jenny. Yeah, sure. No. Well, what we got then? Not too sure. I picked him up this morning. He went to the village for breakfast. And his black friend came and picked him up and dropped him off at Robin's Park at 12 o'clock. Sat on a bench for 40 minutes and then gets picked up again. They go out for a couple of beers. And then they drive all the way out here for 5.30. And there they've sat for the last two hours. Well, well, well. What do you think they're doing? Watching or waiting? On the park, waiting. Here, watching. The latest inflation figures were out today, and they indicate we may complete a fiscal year in which the rate was under 4%, the 11th month with little inflation. And there was a new twist today in the possible connection well, between the Canada weather's and the notorious Nazi general Joseph Mengele. And I took your call the other day. Oh, that was you. Well, you said you'd get back to me. I was wondering what happened with that report. What happened to that jogger? Did you people find anything in the ravine? The reason I haven't been back to you is that I'm having trouble finding the report. You what? I contacted records right after I called you and still haven't had any word from them. This is ridiculous. Yes, sir. Well, look, 
I was uh, just going on my break, but uh, come on in. And I'll call Central Division. And they'll put a fire under someone, and we should get results within the hour. Well, you must be concerned to come out of your way like this. Well, of course I'm concerned, but I don't have an hour. Why don't you go on your break? I'll call you later this afternoon. You can tell me if you have anything new. Okay. It's Winger. P.C. Winger? Right. And I'm on duty till 3 today. If you miss me, I'm on the same shift tomorrow. Well, good, good morning, good morning. Uh, you remember Mr. Armstrong. He's here following up on his report of that mugging down in the ravine. It was no mugging. A man was shot. Yes, of course I remember. P.C. Winger seems to believe the file's in misplaced or sent the records or something. I just assured Mr. Armstrong I'd get right back to work on it. He did. Thanks very much, Sergeant. Have a nice day, gentlemen. What in the hell was that all about? He called here last week asking what had happened because he hadn't heard anything. Well, at the time, I couldn't find the file, and I said I'd get back to him. Since then, I just forgot all about it. Look, Winger, we sent a car into that ravine. They must have logged a report. Now, I want to see it and the civilian's account of the incident, and I want it fast. Okay, Sergeant. I'll get right on it. I'll drop everything. If it's here, we'll have it today. No, I can't stay long, sir. I got a deal cooking. Good timing. I'll order some Chinese food to help yourself. Well, that's great. So what's up, Brett? You make it sound serious. Our Mr. Armstrong showed up at the station this morning. Who? Well, that's his name, remember? Peter Armstrong? Oh, yeah, right. Well, I managed to keep him outside, but before I could get rid of him, the sergeant showed up. He got on my butt to find his file and get working on it. The seams are coming undone, Oscar. <laughs> That's only half of it. Leonetti's back in town. This creep chauffeur came into the village bar while I was there tonight. Well, that's all we need. Did he say anything? No. Other than grunt? No. He never speaks to me or anybody not closely connected. But I'm sure he'll cop us back because Junior and I have that hearing next week. He may not show up at the courthouse, but you could be sure he'll be around somewhere. Where's Lou? Why isn't he here? We've got to get this thing fixed. Well, he's been tailing Armstrong all day. I told him I'd give him a call later on if there was anything he needed to know after we met. You know, we almost got him today. Would have been your perfect accident, too. With witnesses. You know, the car just skidded on the slick road. But you missed it. When was this? Oh, about noon, I guess. No coke? Oh, here you are. This is Fred. This guy's charm is running out, and he doesn't have nine lives. We'll get him, and soon. Then the Manny saga will go no further. Yeah, but you can't get him if he never comes out. He'll come out. Look, the only one's putting any pressure on us is ourselves. And I know your sergeant's on your case, but he doesn't have a clue of your involvement. And he won't have as long as you keep your cool. Okay, okay. But the longer this thing goes on, the more chance of some stupid little thing coming along and blowing it up in our faces. Yeah, I know, but our butts are nowhere near being exposed at this point, so let's not do anything in a panic. 
When you go, leave your crystal ball, will you? It'll entertain you till I fall asleep. Yeah, well, uh, while you're falling asleep, just think about how great it could have been if we got lucky today. Man, we sailed through that intersection due to about 30. Missed the sucker by an inch. Tell me about could have been. Oh, man, you are too glum. Listen, I gotta hit the road. Thanks for the food, and Fred, remember, with Lou and me on the job, we've got nothing to worry about. So just try and relax, huh? Yeah. See ya. Well, gentlemen, there's 10 days left of this hearing. Bring me up to date. What have we got? Don't know what to tell you. Since Jones joined us, their behavior has been most odd. Uh, to say the least. Clearly, this Peter Armstrong has something to do with it, but what is beyond us? A kidnapping. No. He's a vice president, but he's not that big. No, it's got to be something else. <clears throat> what was Matthews doing in the park? Waiting. For what? I have no idea. What about that sixplex? Could be a girlfriend. Who knows? That's it, we just don't know. 
There are a lot of hookers in that end of town. It could be a girlfriend. If it was, he's not one for a lot of chit-chat. He wasn't there long. I'll get a list of the tenants and run them through the computer. Who knows? Got a make on those other two guys you've seen with? Again, we don't know. Haven't seen them since the boxing arena. Geez, this is crazy. Could there be a contract out on this Armstrong guy? That's unlikely. He's not connected. Hmm. And if they have taken out a contract, they're certainly going about it the wrong way. It's not their style. They're rounders, not enforcers. Rounders, you got that right. And we're going to put them all in the corral. Keep up the good work. Keep me posted. Charlie and ask him if I can come by and have a chat with him, please. Yes, I will. Did you sign those letters? Yeah, of course I did. Charlie said he had to come by this way, so he'll see you in your office. Great. Madge, would you make me some copies of these right away, please, and then send them out in the evening mail to these addresses? Yes, okay. Okay. Hi, pal. What's sure. up? Got a couple of minutes? Yeah. I'd like to talk to you about this shooting business. Sure thing. I'm meeting with Tom. Come on, walk over with me. We can talk on the way. As soon as Madge gets back, she's bringing me copies of those letters I'm sending overseas for you two to look over. Charlie. Um, I hate to use you this way. If I talk with Helen about this the way I do with you, I'll scare the daylights out of her. Hey, no problem. As it is, you saw me get the fright of my life yesterday. I'm still a little shaken by it. Why? What on earth happened? When Helen and I were going to lunch, we were wa walking along to Drayson's. All of a sudden, at the corner out here, a car couldn't stop on the wet pavement. It skidded right through. It missed me by a whisker. The guy honked his horn trying to warn There's me. There's never a still... dull moment with you lately. Great, thanks, man. The reason I wanted to talk to you, though, was to help me keep the idea that this had anything to do with this whole ravine incident. Okay. Madge, I'm going to take these along to Tom's office with Charlie. I'll be back in a minute. Look, you can't do this thing alone. Sit down here and call the homicide division downtown. Give them the full story, including your suspicions. Go on, do it right now. They're going to think I'm a crackpot. So what? Tell them. Homicide, please. <clears throat> Hello, I'd like to report a murder. Good. $85. But it's all the identification papers and the credit cards I'll have to report and replace. How long does it take, you think? Mm, about 24 hours. Excuse me. Well, what's brought you in at this time? Something up? I'll say there is. Finish up and let's talk. Who took this call? Doug? Yeah, about an hour ago. He didn't say anything, just said to get you to call. Seem to know you'd be here this morning. Internal affairs, please. Adams, Sergeant, oh. Lieutenant. No, no message, thank you. Well, what's well, this, that? This Armstrong thing is going to hell in the handbasket, and we'll go with it if we don't come up with something fast. And it had better be good. I was awakened at 7 this morning to explain myself, and it was a weak explanation. So weak that internal affairs are being brought in to investigate it. Internal affairs? Now, before I wind up in the Schwitz siphon, I want some answers. Good God, it's, it's really very simple. You took this guy's report. I picked it up to do the follow through it. Well, I noticed a black and white request for a unit to do some investigation. Did you get it? So I put it on the desk along with some other files I was cleaning up. <laughs> it just went out of my mind. Yesterday, I was looking through the files I was working on at the time and found it in another folder. Yeah, here it is. 
And the black and white? What did they report? Jeez, I forgot about them. There's nothing in here. Let's go check with the radio room and see if he still remembers anything coming in. Your story was a bit better than mine, but not very much. I just hope internal affairs are going to believe it. It's not a case for internal affairs. Those jerks at homicide are probably trying to divert some attention away from themselves. Come on. Let's find that squad car report and get it completed before the detectives get here. Art, a couple of weeks ago, I asked a patrol car to investigate a possible homicide down in Ravine Park. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. It was still in my tree uh, a couple of days later. No one here at the time knew anything about it. I couldn't find a file on it or any paperwork, so I put it in the miscellaneous folder until someone asked for it. Well, I'm asking for it now. Oh, Art, was we around when you were asking for that report? No, it was just the watch command of Sergeant Harris, as far as I remember. It's probably incompetence, Constable, but the boys downtown will rule out everything else before they settle for that. They didn't seem too interested in what I had to say. They got me convicted already. Well, that's the way they approach everyone. You're guilty till you prove your innocence. I knew a guy when I was working on a central. They leaned on him so hard, he went home and smoked his pistol. Christ. Yeah, they took it as an admission of guilt. Until about a week later, his partner walked into their office and emptied his piece two inches above the senior officer's head. And they kicked him off the force. At his hearing, when they asked why he lost control like that, he gave them the evidence he'd found. It's beautiful. Yeah, but he still kicked them out. They're not a forgiving bunch when it comes to using them as targets. Hey, Eddie, can I get another round here, please? You know, I used to wonder about that. Where do those guys come from? What's their background? I used to think they were guys that got stung by a bad cop. No, but they're too many for that. Then, I had a partner who moved over. Well, they're rank and file like us. Those guys that show an aptitude get invited to that office. It's a tough assignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a dirty job, eh? Hey, Bernie says there's a message at the bar for you. Oscar called? Well, Barney say what time he called? Sorry, don't know. Bernie with that, Fred? Uh, no, thanks. I'm just fine. Uh, I'm not ready to start exhaling automatic fumes. Well, wait a minute. What was the outcome of all that? Are you being investigated or what? Sure. The way they see it, I shot some guy in the ravine, saw the witness on the subway, raced back to stash the report. Hmm. Oh, and uh, you're right. I have to prove I was five miles away at the time. Naturally. Naturally.
Oscar showing up? Has he been in at all? Damn it. I know we and it goes round and round. Listen up, coach. Look what the team's got for you. I'm going to like this, right? A lot has come together this morning. We think we're finally getting somewhere. Think? Are. First of all, the artist we had working with the two officers who saw the strangers come up with a very workable composite. And Parker here recognized him as the man our gimp was teamed up with. Good work, but are we getting any closer to finding the stuff? No. This is? The tenants list for the apartment building our Mr. Matthews has been visiting all hours of the night. We're not sure what precinct he works out of yet. Or whether he is the third man at the boxing club. But we're going to get a copy to Detective Jones. And if he sees him come or go from the building, he's to stay with him. Parker's going back to tailing the gimp. We're also going through badge assignments the night of the robbery to see if one was issued to this winger guy. I've got time booked downstairs in the practice range. Can we uh, continue this on the way down? Mm -hmm. Have any theories at all how that stuff was removed from the property room? After you said to Sergeant Cummings that the stuff couldn't easily be removed by one person, he had me assign some people to do a search of the building. Very good. Steve, here are the copies of that picture you asked for. Oh, thanks a lot. I have two men working on it. I won't have anything for a while, but they'll leave no stones unturned. I can promise you that. Well, this is a lot more positive than we presented yesterday, but let's keep digging before we go back into the inspector. Well, we're feeling pretty good about it, too. Parker's going back on stakeout. I'm going to follow through on the badges and the search and some info on this guy, Winger. Oh, hey, get a copy of this to Jones. And stick this on my desk when you get back up there. And uh, thanks a lot, Parker. Good work. Yes, Parker. Excellent job. My pleasure. See you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. okay. See you. If he does at all. If the name came up, he fits in. An old policeman's rule. You're probably right. Hmm. Hmm. Single hit. Uh-huh. Keep busy that day? More than enough. What I've been through. Zillions of these. Yeah. Yeah. Looks really I'm just here. down to number five.
sure. This is, uh, yeah. Yeah. Detective Cummings. Yeah. You got a PC winger down there? Good morning, Peter Armstrong's office. I'm sorry, but Mr. Armstrong's in the board meeting. I'll make sure he gets the message. Bye-bye. Constable Winger, the commissioner's after me. The internal affairs have been all over me for a week. Will you please take this to your desk, read it, and stay there. The detectives are coming up to interview you. Sergeant, he uh, already left for the health club. Thank you very much. That was a patrolman you sent down to Armstrong's office. He's on his way to the club. We better send another car down there. Good idea. Okay. Yeah, this is Detective Cummings. And two, and three, and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stretch it out now. Forward, down, and back. Three. nursing an injury, are you? No, I just thought I'd work out in here today. Forward. You're right, it is too nice a day. Down. After the warm-up, I think I'll go up. Back. I've got time today for a change. This'll warm you up. Burpees, together. Down, out, in, up. Down, out, in, up. Down, out. the black guy, but Armstrong's gone down to the park. Well, Parker's down there. Why don't we join him? Yeah. Barney's? Sure, hold on. Fred? Hello? Oscar, where the hell have you been? I've been calling you everywhere. Do I have 
forgot to tell you again, relax, buddy. We've been on this guy's tail every possible moment. Look, you relax with homicide dicks questioning you. The guy has gone and called him, and they brought internal affairs in with him. He can't talk anymore. Have you got me, Oscar? He can't talk to anyone anymore. Brad, it's going to be okay. I'm down at the park right now, and Lou's waiting for him at the gym. We'll get him today. When I said it was coming apart before, I... What, what I meant was it... I can't even think straight. Keep a grip. There's still no... You can't say another word to those homicide guys. Not another squealing word. Brad, take it easy. Someone there's going to hear you. Soon, buddy. It's going to be all over. You all right, Fred? You look awful. Uh, awful? I... Yeah. Yeah, I, uh... I feel awful. Isn't it 
your friend over there? Yeah, right. Where does he think he's going? Go get him. I've ever seen. He's got over that whistle. Hey, wait a minute. You! You've gotten in my way for the last time. Do you hear me? The last time. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. I've only met you once before. You shot off your squealing face to the assholes downtown. Now they're gonna bury me all because of you. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. I've only seen you. Where's Oscar? What have you done with him? Who the hell's Oscar? Honest to God, I don't know any Oscar. Wait a minute. You're there, freeze! Don't do it. Don't even think it. Drop the gun. Drop the gun. Drop it or you're a dead man. The gun. Drop it now. Okay. Down on the ground. You know how to do it. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You are Mr. Armstrong, I gather. <sighs> oh. Got him too, huh? From across the world to across the street, the complete news with Ann Perry. It's probably the paper boy. I'll be right back. A huge shipment of cocaine destined for Montreal has been intercepted by American customs agents in Miami. The cocaine, which had a street value of $8 million, was hidden in a box of money and flowers. Oh, don't get up, Mr. Armstrong. <laughs> this is Detective Parker. How do you do? Please sit down. Thank you. So, how's the ankle? It's still a little sore, but it's coming along. Good. We won't take very long. Uh, we just have some loose ends to tie up and a statement for you to sign. Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this man? And a police chase on foot resulted in the arrest of one person. No. No, I can't say as I do. Well, he was one of them. Today, police were dispatched to Robbins Park, where police constable Fred Winger and Mr. Oscar Matthews were charged with the attempted shooting of a man jogging in the park. Police have not revealed the name of the victim. A police spokesman said the two men and another man, Lou Jackson, were being investigated. And we're about to be picked up for questioning on the theft of evidence in a recent drug case when they happened on the shooting. You fix things good, Oscar Matthews. Real good. Yeah, Arnold Stanger. Thanks. Arnold? Did you hear? Find out what that means in terms of the boy. Yeah, call me here later. got something that needs done. As I was saying, I was sure a search of the ravine would come up with the remains of that jogger. Well, you were right. This is a copy of the statement you made over the phone. Read it over. If it's correct, sign it. And when we get done with those guys, we'll hand them over to Homicide. And when Homicide's finished with them, they'll be away for a long, long time.
This is right out of Hollywood. The car they were driving was found at the airport. No fingerprints or clues of any kind. Hell, even the ashtrays were clean. <laughs> 